Dave. Uh, podcast is what you're saying. It's not a what? ASMR. What the fuck is that? It's where people talk quiet, Steve. No. They this eat is, macaroni. They eat macaroni. Mac- yeah. They, oh my god. It's, it, it's it's a weird kink, but I'm not going to. That's shame a podcast it. thing. That's a that's a thing thing. People love that. It's a shit. porn hub thing. <laughs> oh, you guys are fucked. And welcome <laughs> to the Girl Club Podcast, everybody. I'm Steve Vessel. I'm Death Metal Dave. I'm Ace. Oh my god, Ace. <laughs> Dave's had a bad week at work. How was yours? <laughs> Hot. Oh, man. Okay. Sweaty. So we're recording this actually the day before Friday the 13th. So yeah, you yeah. probably people won't even see this or hear this for another week, which is fine. So we're going to be behind the curve again. Yeah, but who gives a fuck? Nah, you know how many times we've been a, a, you know in front of the curve, Dave? That's right. We were the first people to shit on Rob Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 Ever. no. I doubt that, sir. <laughs> and I don't shit on Rob Zombie. Uh, well, there's a whole podcast. Oh, my God. Oh, anyways, <laughs> guys, <laughs> this is going to be our Friday the 13th Part 6 episode. Oh, man. I know we all have a million notes and a million emotions about this fantastic film. And I'm not saying that sarcastically at all. Where do we start? Let's start with the title. It's actually <laughs> called Jason Lives, Friday the 13th Part 6. It's one of the first ones that had that title before. Like instead of like the Friday the Thirteenth, I know I'm a nerd. I'm like I noticed that when I was a little kid. Yeah, yeah, that's dumb. Sorry, <laughs> that's my first note. <laughs> well, if you start with the trailer, it's very minimalist. Yeah, because it's basically just like it pans in on the tombstone. Tombstone explodes. It's rock and roll. Empty casket. And then it's Alice like, Cooper. The nightmare returns, <laughs> which. If I saw that in the 80s, I would have been like, holy shit, I have to see this movie. Like, they didn't that? even show me the movie. It must be great. <laughs> That's but, how I felt. <laughs> but do you know why they say this is the Nightmare Returns? Because the one before it, you had Roy, which was not the real <laughs> Jason Voorhees. Yeah. Roy the paramedic? And yeah. <laughs> Well, that's uh, that's why you just spoiled this whole <laughs> franchise. <laughs> whatever, whatever. I don't that's, give a I, shit. I call it the Fred. That's actually, I love Part Five. I, I like it always too. loved it. It's got some of the best boobs. It it's uh, it's actually shot well. I love you know it's it's one of those it's one of the films that's like shot almost all through rain. I love fucking elements. I don't know, I'm weird. I'm dork. Yeah. It was it was it was it was good, but it is important to this one because originally this movie, uh, Tommy Jarvis was supposed to be the killer. Yeah, but nobody liked fu- fucking Roy. They were all let down. Like, oh, it's not really Jason. It's just some paramedic. With- they were terrified. Yeah. Like that last movie got so many bad reviews. And fans, quote unquote, hated it. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm just in that weird category of like, I like Halloween three. I like Hall, you know, Friday yeah. the Thirteenth Part Five. I just, I like these fucking movies, and I, I'm not, I'm not going to just take them apart because I, like, well, even once I found out it wasn't Roy, I was like, oh, this movie's bullshit. It's like having like the twist ending or whatever. I love that kind of shit. I don't care. It was, yeah. it was different, but again, they were worried about it because the 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 franchise could have gone in a totally different direction than it did. Yeah. But. From a money standpoint, they're like producers are like, hey, you gotta, you gotta, yeah. gotta bring the man back. Frank uh, Mancuso Jr., I believe, is the producer on Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. I think he's been the producer for a while. Um, he took over after the the you know Sean Cunningham you know said I'm not doing these anymore, and then Steve Miner took up the role. Even I think he even produced the the first three. I think you know two and three, four, five. I don't know. Yeah. Dave, you have anything on that? Maybe not. I don't know. Dave, don't have, Dave's don't laptop that. broke down, so I, I'm, I'm running my notes, and I'm trying to do whatever I can. I don't, I don't have anything on that, but, I mean, we have to th- – this movie is uh, music by Henry, Henry Manfredini. Of course. As as per usual. Yeah. Which is amazing. He does a great job with, this, with all the soundtracks for this series. Yeah, he's a big, huge Bernard Herrmann fan, and you can really feel it in, in these films. My favorite one is part three soundtrack, where it's just like the total disco beat at the beginning, where it's like, it's great. It's 3D. It's 3D. It goes through both ears. It's in stereo. It's in stereo. But they brought in Tom McLaughlin. Tom McLaughlin. He plays Tommy Jarvis. No, no, no. Tom McLaughlin. Tom Matthews. Tom Matthews. Tom McLaughlin is the director. Right. He did One Dark Night before this. And that was, you know, that wasn't seen by a whole lot of movie people, not even nerds that I know. Nobody really talked about that film, but that movie. Got seen by people in the industry, and they were like, "This guy can make a movie." He wrote yeah. the movie on a too. very, yeah, on a very small yeah. budget, and he wrote this film. Yeah, so he did a, he did, he, I think he did a fantastic job. Three now, million dollars. Yeah, three, three million. That's how much they didn't yeah. have any faith in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> and they didn't. It looks good for three million dollars. It looks amazing. He spent a lot of time on this movie. I mean, like, yeah. 
you got to think of it. I mean, it made like six, six I think six point no, like, four, six point four. It's opening weekend. Yeah, then so like it nineteen doubled million. Its, it d- doubled its budget. It ended up somewhere around nineteen. Uh, Nineteen point four million. Thanks, Dave. To be exact. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but uh, so where should where should we go here from here? Should we go into the plot of the movie? I think we should just start talking and then see where we go. Much okay. like you know where Jason goes, he just goes. Well, he kind of stays in a square mile, but whatever. Jason was in the fucking ground at the beginning of this movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's in the <laughs> Eternal Peace Cemetery now. Who's burying motherfuckers like this? Okay, thank you. Because I'm like, okay, my notes were like, who, what, how the fuck is Jason? A mass murdering psychopath killed counselors, ruined their families' lives. His mother killed counselors. He was burnt. Who she, I think she burned the camp in like in the 60s or something. He's killed cops. He's killed local store owners. He's practically ruined all of their tourism, except for camping, I guess. Yeah. And then they're going to bury him in a marked grave. With all the fucking victims, probably. <laughs> yeah, bought the headstone that are that. that are like local victims. It's like, uh, okay, cool. Yeah. It's just what? like it's just like you're on your way to the, your beloved one that's dead, and like, oh, there's the dude that killed him. <laughs> Fuck you. He was cremated, as they say in part five. Well, he wasn't apparently. No shit. And Tommy didn't believe it. That's why he went out there. He Tommy went, knew exactly where he was buried. By the way, <laughs> yeah, he had a fucking map. <laughs> it's like a map to the stars, map to. But like, I had that note too. It's like, are we doing this for mass murderers in the eighties? Are we just fucking burying them? Yeah, just fucking throw yeah. them somewhere, unmarked grave somewhere. Why did bury was, him with their mask? Burying with no, no, he didn't bury him with his mask. <laughs> no, 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 to, Tommy brought it. Oh, Tommy. sorry, yeah, Tommy yeah, had the, right. They let him keep it in that insane asylum. They're like, here, you can keep this mask of this delusion that you're having. Yeah, it seems therapeutic. Apparently, he went through. Many mental institutions. Uh, if you look at his bio and on all, you know, go through the internet like I do, and uh, yeah, I guess he just kept it. You know, I know the whole point was he was supposed to be the killer in this film, and Tom McLaughlin was like, "No, we're scrapping all that. We're going to go right from part four to this." But even at the end of part four, he's like, "I'm a little loony. I might, well, was... I might go kind of crazy." So, how many years has it been? Like, I'm trying. I was trying to figure that Ace out. Ace and I were talking about that before we started this. Now, there's actually a real official timeline. But again, how official is it? Who's actually making these timelines? I mean, I have nerd friends who literally break down all everything. Yeah. They pull like a Joe Bob. They know all the kills. They know all the, like, apparently, you say you take his age from the first film when he was a child, when, like, the memories, and then you see him in part two. That's the proper age for him. And then part three is, like, I, I don't know. It's, like, is it a year later? Because they're at the bluff. It's not really even the camp. It's, and... It's weird. And then that one happens, like, in part four is, like, the next day. So this is also a movie that happens on Friday the 13th, because they talk about it in the film. Right. A lot of them, the other ones don't. I think I think in this one they're like, it's a perfect day for this to happen. You know why? It's Friday the 13th. <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, the, the the cop, uh, the we'll talk about him later from the Shocker. He's the in fucking it. Yeah. goober. Yeah. <laughs> you bang. Oh, God. So, you know, the movie, like, he's just going to go fucking... Dig up Jay. He's like, I gotta see. And he's like, his idea is like, I'm gonna set him on fire. So yeah. That's how you take care of it. He stabs him with that, uh, he digs him up. And great special effects, by the way. Yeah. yeah. They just, they put somebody in a hole and said, we're gonna cover you with maggots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's very Italian. I mean, it, it was, it was. He's uh, got it. He's got his, he's got his right hand buddy, Hawes, from the mental institution. I don't know if they're taking a day off or if they stole the, because that's Pam's truck, by the way, from part five. So I guess oh, she's yeah. still alive. That's the exact same truck that she drove. Uh, Pam is the pretty much the caretaker from the first film that yeah. who lived. Yeah. And he's driving her truck. So did he steal it? Uh, you know, I don't know. Because the way Hawes acts is like they're kind of out, like on work <coughs> release or some shit. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, because yeah. he even mentions like, oh, if they if they knew what we were doing, they'd put us back in that home. Maybe they're maybe they're just out out. Maybe they maybe they didn't just get a day pass. But maybe they gave people day passes in the eighties. Fuck, I don't know. You're kind of crazy, but not too crazy today. I can tell you what they didn't Take a do. Break. They didn't lock their fucking doors or windows. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, Haas is played by, uh, what is it, uh, Ron Polillo. He's a dude from Walking Back Carter, uh, Cotta, and he did, like, voice work for, like, Laverne and Shirley cartoon. I didn't know they did one of those. Oh, yeah. Darkwing Duck, he actually is the, the voice of the Rubik's Cube from the character of the Rubik, the Amazing Cube. <laughs> if anybody knows what the fuck I'm talking about, or I'm just really old and fucking... I have, I have no clue. Screw both of you guys. Cube, okay, anyways. But... Uh, let's go to the Frankenstein. It's like the Frankenstein scene, the cemetery yeah. scene. What do you got? <clears throat> he uh, stabs him with this weather vane that happens to be there. Well, you know, he pulls it off the uh, off the fence line. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He does. He pulls it off the fence line. I wish it like, was a weather vane. He has his, he has <laughs> his, it looks it's like a live a, moment. Oh yeah, it's like a weather vane because he stabs him and then fucking he's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna pour some gasoline on him. What happens? Lightning. Lightning. This is the part where his friends like, we need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it's like I've already seen a corpse covered in maggots. Now there's lightning. Hits him again. Bam. Bam. 
Jason's alive. Jason's alive, but Tommy doesn't know that because da- he gets down in that hole. He's like, oh, I gotta get this thing out of him. I gotta pull the steak out before I burn him. <clears throat> no, I'd have left that in there. Yeah, no shit. He was probably yeah. held down. The movie might have been over if you just left it in there. Kind of like a sandwich when you put the little steak in there, just if hold you, it all together. He's like a club he sandwich. A, <laughs> club sandwich, Jason. If you brought a Zippo with him, maybe the movie would have ended there. Oh, yeah, you're ruining the plot. Who brings matches with him to yeah, do that? Well, no, people like, that don't plan poor, they plan can't poorly. Like this match. I mean, it's windy. It might just be windy. He didn't know. A storm was coming, okay? <laughs> well, that's after Jason gets up, and he's all like, he grabs him, and Tommy gets out, and he kicks him down, and he jumps away, and he's like, oh, shit. He's, he's all covered in fucking gasoline. He's like, I'm going to burn him with this match. Doesn't light. Doesn't light. Oh, here comes the storm. And then it starts raining. It's like, should have bought a Zippo. That, yeah. that could have been a perfect uh, tagline. For Zippo? For Zippo. Uh, yes. Smoker's <laughs> delight. No, been uh, the gat milk of Zippo commercials. <laughs> yeah, and Hawes tries to save him. He's very gallant. I mean, this guy, is, he doesn't even want to be there, let alone see Jason's fucking reanimated corpse. And then he's like, I'm going to save you. And he hits yeah. him with a, with a great shovel that's made out of balsa wood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's fucking well. I mean, now we, now Jason is back from the dead. He's uh, he's undead. He's a monster. He's like a Terminator. Super strength, twice as strong. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, he's James Bond also. Yeah, that, I was gonna bring that up, man. <laughs> that fucking James Bond opening because uh, you know, Tommy gets away and then they show he's just walking. He's got his pace and then he just fucking slashes. It's Ba-na-na-na. great. Ba-na-na. Ba-na-na. I think that lets you know where you are when you're watching this film because they were going for him uh, as Tom McLaughlin has said many times it's, it's a comic book the other films were kind of stagnant camera which i don't necessarily agree with that i think some of the other films of steve minor did especially have a lot of movement to the camera but he wanted to give it like color and like the soundscape all these little things that make it make you know it's kind of like it's there's not we're not going to be writing a lot of jokes in this movie which is true not true by the way tom mclaughlin you wrote yeah. this movie and uh <coughs> it's it's just it's hyper reality and might as well just make it Frankenstein Returns. Here yeah, we go. It is. It is. And it is, yeah. it is a comedy. It's, yeah. it's, don't 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 try to say it's not. It's 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 comedic. I love it's, it. It's it very is. lighthearted. So, this is where they sort of set up the. I mean, the, the plot is sort of set up, but uh, you find out that Camp Crystal Lake is no longer Crystal Lake, and that's what I've got a problem with. Like, that's why I really want to know how fucking long has it been? Because like we just fucking renamed it. Right, Kim Forrest and, Green, yeah. and his daughter, who uh, is, uh, the sheriff's name is Mike Garris, and it's not Mick. <laughs> and his daughter Megan, and it's like it's like it's the legend of Jason, like they yeah. don't know. So, and she's obviously, you know, I guess she's supposed to be eighteen. It's maybe, been like twelve years, seventeen. Man. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's that's the that's the timeline that's kind of blurry. And if you're in, if you're watching this on YouTube, please just you know light us up with that shit. Tell us that you know, I God damn you, mother flip flops. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, like if like if like say 12 years after the Chernobyl accident happened, they were like, hey, you can live at this place. It's called fucking Cedar Green Forest. It's, ca- it's called Chickernobyl. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and you know, it's it's just it blows my mind that uh, I mean, I get it. Whatever, it's a movie. Let's go with it. But uh, nobody, nobody remembers this. They're gonna open a camp there. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's maybe it's been renovated because none of the cabins. Uh, this was filmed, I think, in Atlanta. For the I'm most just, part. I'm just saying. When I was a kid, that Adam Walsh kid got got abducted. I knew not to run away at Sears because that's where kids get abducted. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> See, my parents never warned me, and we went to Sears a lot. Yeah, I'm I don't just know. Saying. Maybe I don't know if they're trying to say something or not. But that sort of sets up the movie. They're like, "Oh, we're going to reopen this camp. It's you know, it's not Crystal Lake anymore. It's Camp Forest Green. Nobody knows because nobody knows how to read a fucking newspaper." Yeah. Well, we find this out when Tommy tears through town, finds the finds the uh, the the police station. Uh, now you have to remember he I, he actually is from this area. Like this is his hometown. This is the place where his his mom and his dad, you know everybody gets fucking killed. He didn't kill his dad. You know, obviously he killed his mother. His mother. His sister went insane. He went yeah. and, so he knows where everything's supposed to be. I guess. We're not supposed to notice that nothing is the same. It doesn't matter. Like I said, it was filmed in Atlanta, and it's fucking fall. Yeah. Okay? There's leaves. There's jackets. Everyone's wearing run DMC jacket and coats and shit. You didn't so, go to camp in the fall? No. You were a kid. Fall that was camp? The, <laughs> dude, that's the perfect time to go camping. It's oh, not too hot. Shit. There's not a ton of ticks everywhere. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's, it's not a, summer camp thing, guys. My favorite part is when they go into the police station and the cop shows up. And uh, Rogers wrote down exposition cop because he's just like, hey, you're that kid who 
was in the middle of asylum, and then your mother was killed, and it's just like, is everybody caught up now? Okay, let's go. <laughs> you have to get everyone caught up to speed. Exactly. He tears ass into the cop station. He pulls out a gun. He's like, hey, you almost got shot in the face, poor. How you doing? What's your name? And then, yeah, the whole <laughs> fucking Sheriff Garris has to give us the lowdown on who do, who this is, even though everyone should know. They just This is the third movie with the same character. Yeah. Just in case if you don't, here he is to tell you. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, so he goes in, everybody's like, oh. Everything's yeah. fine. Jason's back to life. It's like, you're crazy. But you're crazy. Yeah. Get out, and then, But then I'm going to pull the gun. I'm going to pull. try to pull the gun out of your holster, right? Or no, he tries to get into the, the, the gun cabinet. Yeah. And he's like, what the fuck? And then what's his face from Shocker? He walks in with all their, like, their dinner for the night, and he just fucks up their <laughs> dinner. And he's like, whoa, Junior. <laughs> they spin around, throw him in the cage. He pulls the gun on him. He's like. Oh my God! Wherever the red light goes, motherfuckers! Yeah. Oh, he's got the just, stupid right, laser. I'm going home. <laughs> that happened. I believe that happens later too. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. It does. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't paying attention to this part because I've already seen the fucking movie. Oh, that, no! This is what he says: like wherever the red dot goes, you bang. He's like, oh, you just yeah. made my you made my deputy to pull his favorite thing, you know, with his new fucking scope. Oh, I, actually, that happens later. You're That's right. Later on, yeah. yeah. Ah, See? yeah. When they chase him down. Yeah, oh, I like I thought, that. I thought so. No, you get you get your first uh, Jason. Jason's getting his getting his work on now. Oh, that's right. They he's, they they just spin him around, put him in the in the in the jail cell, and then carry on. Yeah, and then Jason gets his first kill. He's a couple in a fucking Volkswagen Beetle. Darren the, is the dude from Ghost. He's the bad guy from Ghost. Yeah, the, you're right. The, the bad guy from Ghost who gets out. And he's like he's like, well, we can't back up. Just run him over. Just get he'll he'll move. And guess what? Doesn't fucking flinch. Yeah, I mean, Elizabeth is like, no, what the fuck are you doing? She, they know the movie tropes. I love this. It's yeah, way before yeah. Scream. Yeah, so it was, it was cool to do this because I think she said something along the lines like, I've seen horror films. Somebody standing in the middle of the road with a mask is not a good thing. Yeah, she, Some, yeah something along those lines. So she she sort of breaks the fourth wall there. And just That's the thing about this film is they break the fourth wall a few times, and this is the first time that they do it. Yeah. So, you know, she's And that's, that's Tom McLaughlin's wife. Oh, well, yeah. the more you know. Elizabeth. Not Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Lisbeth. I, I just think that I just think that scene's funny because, you know, they're driving a Volkswagen Beetle. He gets out with his gun. He's like, "I'll the, shoot you!" And the he, smallest gun yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah. He's got <laughs> his like a little. He's got his fucking gun. Saturday night special out, <laughs> and he misses. Like he's like three feet away from him. He doesn't look like he hit him. He's like shooting over here. Jason's here, and of course he gets fucking killed. And then she gets out, and she's all fucking frantic. And then she falls in the mud, and she's like. I've got money. <laughs> like, what is he going to do? Like, this guy. I mean, and credit cards. But then again, he might need money because we know he gets around because he needs bus fare. He gets it. That's how he gets his cab. In part two. In part He's two. He's not Michael Myers. He doesn't know how to drive. He doesn't know how to drive. Oh, yeah. They never really established that. I think Jason should be able to drive. But he might get pulled over looking like that. Because yes. Michael Myers only drives on Halloween. Yeah. So, you know, having a guy in a mask, not a big deal. But if Friday it's like, the 13th happens in you know, you know, any time of the year. Thursday the 12th, he's definitely getting pulled he's over. He's getting pulled over, <laughs> man. He's getting t- <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so... Um, well, you, from- you get the American Express card joke. There, oh, yeah. There's where American- it's just in the mud, and it's like, don't leave home without it. And you're like, <laughs> See? I remember those commercials. Well, that's one of those scenes in the movie theater when everyone says that, though. That's what's great about it. <laughs> And it's weird. That's the, that's the second. That's the second capitalizing on marketing that they could have done. Maybe they did. Who knows? I don't know. Find that out, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> marketing in, in Friday the Thirteenth Part call, Six. Call, yeah. call the American Express. The people. creepy guy from. Uh, he was like, "Don't leave home without it." Without so, it. Was that Telly Savalas? No. 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 It was no, no. Club. Never mind. Unsolved that's... Mysteries guy. <laughs> oh yeah. Dun, Robert dun, dun, Stack. Dun, 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 dun. Now this is the first time we get to see Jason, the Black Eyes Jason. How kind of we? This is the beginning of how pe- most people remember Jason Voorhees. Like you, every like uh, um, mask group I'm in, it's always like, how do you black out the eyes? Like this is the first one where they you don't really see his eyes that much, except for like it's a close up. Even daylight, he has black eyes. Yeah, <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is. That is something I didn't notice, Steve. I'm thanks sorry. For, thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. No, the the more you know, <laughs> the more you know. Uh, so this is like okay, let's go to the uh, the steam where they, they were in the like, it's like the paint gun scene. Oh yeah, the paintball yeah. Team, yeah. team building like exercise. Te- team building. These They're fucking office yuppies. fuck. Let's go to Camp Crystal Lake. <laughs> They're old enough to know. Everybody loves that team building exercises when yeah. your boss is like, "We're gonna go on a team building event and we're gonna bowl or fucking play paintball or some shit." And you're like, "Great!" And the whole time you're thinking like, "There's that one person you don't like," and you're like, "I'm gonna get this motherfucker." I'm gonna shoot them. <laughs> what office is this? Because 
Besides her, she's the biggest badass in the office. I think they said they're insurance agents or something. Is that what it is? I think I think that's what they, they, they referenced. Generic eighties person they, jobs. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. You've got everyone's going bald except for her. Yeah. She's the only one who like has balls. Yeah. And I, then you've got the fucking I, I'm I'm like Rambo guy, but he's still going bald and looks stupid just like me. Yeah. I do I do appreciate <laughs> how she like emasculates them. I like, love it. Like she shoots the two guys and then it shows the next guy. He's like she shouldn't be out here. She's a woman. Yeah. Uh, this is a man's game. This is a man's game. And then, you know what? He gets murdered. How'd that I, work out for you? No shit. And Before that, he shoots Jason with a paintball gun, no, which no. was his only kill. Oh, no, no. Yeah, that, that's the, that, that, the other guy. Yeah. yeah. That was the other guy. This yeah. is the guy that actually had the machete. Right. So he gets his he gets his machete. He gets his weapon of choice. Oh, he rips his arm off. And that's another part of the comedy in this film is when he grabs that machete from him and then spins him into a tree, smacks face first into the tree. and it's <laughs> that, face. It's a smiley face on the tree. Yeah. I got that. I said, smiley face, machete. <laughs> <laughs> That's your notes. And then, and, then the, and then the very next one is triple machete decapitation. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I wish they'd had that, kept that in the film. He they they edited the fuck out of this movie. He leaves a smiley face in that tree like Forrest Gump leaves a smiley face on a t-shirt. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Like it happens. A little smile. <laughs> two dots and a smile like... Uh, More marketing ideas from this movie. <laughs> yeah, and then as they're walking through the woods, he's hiding behind a branch. Jason Voorhees is hiding behind a branch <laughs> in broad daylight. There's no leaves on the bush, on the trees or anything. He, and they just walk right by him. He's like, these dumb motherfuckers. <laughs> well, before, before we get too far, Steve, you just made me I had a great idea. So oh. you just need to make a, a, a make a shirt, a Gore Club shirt, with that smiley face tree in the blood and just say, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and nobody's like, oh, Forrest Gump is like, no, bitches. All right, so that's that's happening. Oh, stay God. tuned. But anyway, so he's hiding behind a tree. He's very a branch. He's very he's very <laughs> stealthy. <laughs> stealthy, yes, the stealthiest Jason we've ever seen. And you know what? I made a note about this. If Jason hadn't died, he'd be a great camp counselor. What? He can survive on his own. Oh, he knows how to make a fire. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to kill things and by, hunt. By no, no. <laughs> he knows how to make a shelter. Tell me he wouldn't make a great camp counselor. Oh, my God. He's he would, dead. I mean, well, <laughs> I mean, he can't talk. I'm just saying if he hadn't been killed, like, all those years ago, he would have been the lead, lead counselor at this camp. Oh, my Anyways, God. He's he like Larry sex. Drake. He's like yeah. the Larry Drake character in L.A. Law. Yeah. Uh, and then but he's a camp counselor. He's like, hey, everybody, over here. Yeah, he's great. He's got to be better than these fucking idiots. Oh my god! You know what? I think I, I'm on. I'm on this. I'm on that page. I'm on it. He believes in abstinence only education. <laughs> abstinence only. Don't, do not have sex, <laughs> or else it's gonna be bad. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> so uh, where are we in the story? You tri- goofs? Tri- tri- triple decapitation. We're all over the place. The point I even fucking pulled <laughs> scenes no. are even happening yet. No, he, he decapitates the three people all in one fell swoop. Yeah. Okay. That's right. We're still on the paint gun. He scene. can teach people how to cut down a tree. More, more to his credit, and then the. That one, that one goober. That's the one that you were talking about. Yeah. yeah, shoots him in the chest, and then he's just like, "What know? did you think he was like on the alternative oh, team or something? Like a fill in?" Like... It's like that paintball machete is really cool. It's awful. Oh, <laughs> you must be one of the guys from maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> you wore your overalls out here. <laughs> you big dummy. <laughs> so we don't see that character. We don't even see him die. I mean, we just see the aftermath later on. And I, and now I, I was talking to somebody else about this film about that character. I was like, he, I wanted him to live. And then you see his aftermath later, and I was like, "Fuck." Yeah. Um, I want to talk about something else. There, there is not you know not a different movie, but this is this film is the one of the ones that you actually like all of the characters, for the most part, like all of the yeah. counselors. Well, except that one douchebag. Except the kid in the RV. Court. The, yeah. Court's Fuck. awesome. Man. Court is not awesome. When RV fucking kid? ten. He was all right. First off, ten years old, and Court's <laughs> banging some chick no, in no. an RV. No, no, because you go listening to, the, to metal music. He's he's hanging out with these like, hanging out with kids. He's like, all right, kids, you see these rocks? These rocks were 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 Indian rocks, and the father would go off, and then the mother would come. You want to go? And then he's off with some lady, and then the kid would come out and knock down the rocks, and it would be a signal. It's just like shut the fuck up. See, I like that. <laughs> Even guy. as a kid, I would. Being like this bullshit, yeah. and that's what he says. It's like the, the kids like this is this is interesting as get. We're in big trouble, dude. Yeah, yeah. Those two kids, those like, two kids are good. <laughs> oh, they're great. They're 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 in they're in scenes later too. It's yeah. some good lines. They in are, that. they are, they are. But but like it's overall though, this is the, this is a, a cast of, of people that I I enjoyed watching. I don't I don't like. Oh my god, it's so fucking. After this part seven, it's very formulaic. I mean, this is formulaic. I mean, you. But except you don't have the jock, and I guess what's her name? Uh, she wears the, the the football jersey. Oh. I guess to symbolize that. But besides that, you don't have all of the little 
formulated characters that pretty much kind of spawned this whole genre. Yeah, no, you yeah. are correct. This is just this is just like a group of camp counselors out there having fun in an RV. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> banging that RV scene, and this is the only one I can think of in the franchise that has no nudity. Yeah, you think no about nudity. like he had his shirt up, but her shirt was buttoned. Yeah, I was like, this is bullshit. As a as a as a as a teenager watching this, I was very yeah. upset. Which is why this was the least rented one by me as a child. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no, Jason boobs. Yeah, that was that, but that that was like the worst sex scene ever. She's like, she's what? she's like, she's not like, if you're she's, a girl. She's like, she's like, hold on, hold on, you just gotta wait till the song. He's like, well, how long's the song? Ten minutes. You should, yeah, his face is like, what? He's like, well, they're like listening to like Inagata De Vida or something. <laughs> Like, he's like, you gotta make it through the whole song. He's like, oh my god, this is not gonna happen. Oh, fuck, power gets cut off. But I mean, the, that, yeah, the, that scene, especially. But as far as like the casting and everything, this is this this movie. The way that Tom McLaughlin changed it, it has it has a car chase. It has shootouts. It's like has the whole comic book feel. It's the it's the first one that doesn't. It's completely unrealistic feeling, but it works for me. At least it does for me. No, oh, no, it is great. Yeah, it is great in its own right, Steve. God damn you! I think also wasn't the. Like with the whole paintball scene, wasn't that the original? There was two different people who played Jason. Yeah, that was the only scene that the original guy is uh, was they, Dan Bra- Bra- yeah. Dan Bradley, I think. They got rid of him because they said he was too fat. Oh, was it? I think so. I th- now, I'm going to quote something I read oh, on do IMDb. It. Oh, yeah. Was that uh, the original actor they said was too fat to play Jason, and the actual nickname that somebody used in quotes on oh, no. IMDb was. Bitch tits, Jason. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Which I was like, I was like, damn, man. I did not. Like, he's not that bad. God damn! It. <laughs> I was like, they put that on IMDb. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I didn't know that. You know, anybody could just put I that. I want to see there. the source on this. Source, please. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Did it have a source? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. God. Some damn. kid in his basement. Poor, poor Dan Bradley. I'm pretty sure that's the name of the guy who. Uh, was the original Jason on this film, and then he was replaced by C.J. Graham, who's fucking great. Yeah. And this was C.J. Graham's first... This is only. This is only, yeah. This is his only time playing Jason Voorhees, and he is one of my top three. Believe it or not, T- uh, Kane Hodder is number three, in my in my opinion. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a broker, C.J. Graham, and then Kane Hodder guy. Yeah, part three is my favorite one. A lot of people... He's my favorite guy. He's big and like... Uh... Yeah, Kane Hodder, I mean, Kane Hodder is short. He's not very big compared to C.J. Graham. They actually had to put all that foam on him, to give him lifts. I mean, that that's not important. It's like, you know, C.J. Graham's a great guy. Yeah. But the way that Jason is, from here on out, we know him. This is the original one. And in Part 7, they're kind of emulating that. And then he looks amazing. That's why Part 7 always sticks out in most people's brain, because he looks fucking amazing in that film. Yeah. But without this one, you don't have that. Yeah. And, yeah, and, uh, and he's he's also the first one to do all the first fast jerks and all that kind of stuff that Kane kind of takes credit for a little bit, I think, too much. Um, and what Kane brought to the role, he he kind of just con, con, uh, combined all of the other Jasons, what they all did. Yeah. You know, Brooker was uh, the runner, and then um, uh, Borton Gillette was the faker because he's barely yeah. in, it, in part two. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he, he put it all together, and, and Kane Hodder made the, the perfect Jason. But my mine as a child, part six. C.J. Graham. And I've heard he's an amazing human being. I've never met him. And I hope rant. so. And in C.J. Graham rant. <laughs> yeah. Just tell me more why you love him. I don't know. I think he's a Leo. and uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I love him. He seems like a nice guy, though. I've yeah. seen him in conventions. I, yeah. don't think, I don't think there's been anybody that plays Jason Voorhees that I've seen in conventions has been like a fucking prick. Oh, I will not. Well, you know what? He's passed away. I had to interview him for a convention, and he, and, oh, man, it was Steve Dash. Steve Dash, it, to me and my co-host at this convention, and we did we had to interview all of the guests. He was just so play by numbers, and it was kind of depressing. And he didn't give a shit, and uh, and at least not for me in my interview. And it was live; it went over the loudspeakers for the whole convention to hear. Oh, wow. And he was like, "Yeah, man, it was just another job." And I'm like, uh, "We have a whole interview here, and then you're already playing it off like, and you know, I got paid. Yeah. Fuck Warren and Gillette. He was just kind of maybe he was having a bad day." Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was my like, that was my experience. It's like goddamn nerds interviewing me about Jason for yeah. the hundredth time, God. and I loved him. I loved him, man. Uh, but yeah, that that was my experience with that. Richard Brooker, amazing human being. So I'm not gonna shit on on Steve Dash anymore. But whatever. <laughs> God, Steve, bring down the fucking party. Anyway, Tommy Jarvis is on the move now. He's on the move. Yeah, he's on the move. He's gotta he's gotta he's gotta get out there. He's gotta find Jason. 
Okay. He's got all his books out. He's I like, all, how, I like how you're trying to narrate us through this movie. He's, he's got he's got he's got all his books out. His occult his books. Occult books. How to just, kill mass pretty, murders. That's <laughs> yeah. fucking Barnes and Noble or some <laughs> shit. He went to that bookstore that. Uh, oh God. <laughs> The one, the one in the Howling? The one he went to the bookstore from the Howling. <laughs> yeah. And then he got the books from there about how to kill occult people. <laughs> uh, I think... I think. Uh, I liked that the uh, the cop station had the bat phone. Did anybody else notice that? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's like a series of phones, and then they have the this red one phone, red yeah. phone that I guess if you call that number... Then that's a big thing. Megan, that's the one Megan picks up and she's like, Oh, he's too busy. He's draining the lizard. I'm like, You picked up the red phone and that's yeah. how you act? Like, come on, Megan. <laughs> we did we did skip a little we got to the RV sex scene too, because you meet uh Well, I love the RV oh, sex scene. Oh, I know. All. But uh was it the the grave digger? Was it Martin? Martin. Martin he's, rules. He's, oh. he's he's another cool guy. He's like, goddamn kids. He's not a fart head either. <clears throat> no, he's not a fart head. <laughs> and he, he he kind of also breaks the fourth wall. He, yeah. he talks right to the right to the uh, right to the audience. Yeah. 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 His, he gets killed too, and it's really funny. I count this as two kills because he talks to his bottle. He calls oh. his bottle Kathleen. <laughs> oh, Kathleen, you <laughs> led me astray. You're going to be the death of me. He fucking throws that shit behind him, and then Jason stabs him with it. Yeah, he breaks it, and he goes, Oh, is this yours? Kill, oh. Killed killed by his woman. Killed, killed by his bourbon. That's right. And then that's when you get the uh, the other two that try to get away. They try to get away. They see that shit, and he's like, "Oh shit, we gotta run!" Yeah. And then Jason fucking catches up to him. They're on their Vespa or whatever the fuck. Now that was a scene that was all added later. They said because they needed more kills. There was only yeah. like thirteen kills originally, and they beefed it up to sixteen. Um, so Martin was actually not supposed to die. Yeah. He's actually supposed to help in the film, but we'll talk about when we get to the end of the movie. Uh, it was never filmed. It was part of the, the script. But uh, there you go. Yeah, but we could just we can just you know uh, oh one thing one thing I did make a note of there's the Jason card game that she talks about. Oh, I know always I know a lot of people who figured that out, but I've never been able to play it. I found I found the way to play it, and I'm not going to go through and explain it, but yeah. they they explain it in the movie sort of, and uh, it's an actual thing. You can play this card game. And uh, I've got rules for it. I found them online. I'll post them on the Gore Club page. I'm oh, not please. Gonna, I'm not going to tell you all the rules right now. Fuck it. Figure it out. Google it. <laughs> Is it harder than Magic the Gathering? <laughs> no, it's way easier than that. And you just separate. Oh, I'm not going into. It. She she explains it in the movie, and I thought that was really cool because you could you know it, it's another marketing fucking scheme for them. So they had American Express, Zippo, and then they had a card game they could have made too. So yeah, it had been fantastic. I mean, all the card games that come out, especially from like the '90s now. Jason Friday yeah. the 13th, but make it like this. They missed yeah. out on all that Freddy Krueger money with like toys and like pulling the string on the back and like gloves. Like he could have had all that. What's Jason, Jason gonna say? Six. Yeah. What's Jason gonna say besides? You just <laughs> you pull the string and his head tilts. <laughs> <laughs> when he's watching Court Bane, yeah. and what's her name? Darcy Demas, I think, is the, the woman uh, who was in that. and doesn't get to show her boobs. And that that in the that RV scene was actually really cool because they get freaked out and they're like, "Oh fuck, we gotta get out of here!" And he starts driving away and he drives like a fucking idiot. She's flying through the back. This is why I say the movie's a comedy because she gets up, she falls down. <laughs> he's like, "This is great," and he's got the stupid look he on his face. He says that like five times. <laughs> yeah, this and, is great. And then she flies back. She flies forward, flies back, and it's it's a, it's uh, it's pretty funny. And then guess what? Jason was in the shitter the he, whole time. He's been in, <laughs> well. It took a minute. It took like he snuck in there, used the facilities. He hasn't shit <laughs> yeah. in like twelve years. <laughs> he's been buried. <laughs> Oh, God. No, Jason see. shit. What's this maggot balls coming out of? This is getting gross. <laughs> so he pulls her in the bathroom, and then Court is up front, and I, I, I saved his fucking quote. Hold on a sec. Oh please. <laughs> he's like, he's like, what are you doing back there? Because he hears her like getting oh, yeah, fucking murdered, and that's that's actually a really cool scene because you're seeing from the top down. She's struggling, and he fucking just rams her face. Through the side, doesn't go all the way through the side oh, of, yeah. of, of the, the RV. Yeah, he just yeah. sort of pushes out. He's like, it's a great effect. He's like taking a dump. Mind if I come back here and peek, or vice versa? Yeah, he said snatch a peek or vice versa. <laughs> so like, peek a snatch would be the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's gross, dude. She's taking a dump. <laughs> yeah, he's got a he's got a weird kink, and then yeah. he gets stabbed to the neck. Yeah. That's the last thing he said. I think this is the one of the f <laughs> first times that we hear Alice Cooper. Yeah, you get Alice Cooper on there. Because he was driving that RV like a fucking maniac. Yeah. And Alice Cooper does it to you. What is that song? Is it the... the uh, Teenage Frankenstein? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
which was a great fucking scene when that RV hits that uh, hits that embankment or whatever. They have. Like I don't know if it's like a big rock or what the hell's yeah. on the side of Grand yeah. Crystal Lake, and boom, it blows up. It's beautiful, and it's it's a really cool shot too because you know Jason jumps out and he's just like standing there and the fucking RV's on fire. It's he like, looks amazing. That is an amazing. It looks amazing. It's iconic. The, the, the scene is lit well. Like everything about that scene is fucking awesome. Yeah, it took all week to shoot. And another thing that you notice about this film is that when Jason uses a weapon, it's done. Yeah. He doesn't re- he doesn't pull that when he pulls that knife and shoves it into Cord's skull, it's gone out of his hip. You don't he doesn't see get replaced later when he's throwing all he gets by the way, he's like the best fucking he has the most accuracy with those damn throwing darts. You know, they, they disappear. They're not they're not pulled back. The continuity on this movie was pretty cool. So what yeah. you're saying is he's forgetful. Well yeah. he stabbed the guy damn. in the neck. He's like, damn, Where did my babe. knife go? <laughs> Jason, you're dumb. It's just like the real <laughs> James Bond and Goldeneye. When you run out of the knives, you don't have any more knives. <laughs> ah, see, now it all comes back full circle. <laughs> um <clears throat> so we we didn't want to get to Tommy and he's with Megan. Megan is played by Jennifer Cook. She was actually in a television show called V when I was a kid, which I was a big fan of. And she kicks ass in this role because this person could be very fucking annoying. And I think she pulls it off really well. Why is it that every cop's daughter is a mouthy, mouthy, mouthy person? She's just yeah, she's, she's, like in every every one of these movies, you're talking about like Daniel Harris and Halloween yeah, or something. Yeah, like it's in, just in like the Rob Zombie one. Like, ha ha, Dad, you're just full of shit. And he's like, no, he's fucking crazy. He's a murderer. That's the thing. Yeah. And she's fucking like, Sheriff ah. Garris is trying. He's like, he's a murderer. She's like, I like him. He's yeah. cute. <laughs> and at this point, like they don't believe Jason's even alive. And they no. just think he's the one out there killing everybody. And she's like, I like the bad boys. <laughs> so we haven't even talked about the time where they like they let him go. Remember that? Yeah. They fucking they're like, Oh, you you know what? I'm sick of seeing your face. This is before they know the murders are happening. And they're like, get you know, I know you try to take the gun out of the rack and all that shit. We're just gonna get you out of here because you're bothering me. Because it was the eighties. So get back in your and go yeah. back in your truck your and we're see you. They're like, you're white, get out of here. Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, I just remember that scene. I was like, Really? It's how it works in small towns. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, man, I, I made a few other notes. Uh, so they, I know. Uh, what's your notes? Go ahead. I know you oh, lost your tablet, so it's kind of like a scramble. <laughs> I know. Well, I know what just, that feels like. It's just, it's just, it says, "Cop's daughter is always mouthy. Great idea to help potential killer." <laughs> <laughs> well, he's hot. You forget that Tommy Jarvis is fucking hot. Yeah. Oh. By '80s standards or today's standards? She's like by a lot of standards. Oh, okay. Dave. I didn't okay. know. I didn't know. You're that, that guy from Return of the Living Dead, and I want you in my Camaro right now. <laughs> well, I was going to say, let's talk about Tommy Jarvis for a second. Okay, he was created by Bruce uh, Sackow. Uh, he's played by Corey Feldog, John Shepard, who I think was actually a badass in Part Five, and then Tom Matthews. Uh, he, pers- he first appeared in Part Four as like was his like the his mom was widowed, and then we never really know what happened to his dad, and then his hot ass sister. So that's the introduction of Tommy Jarvis, and now he's like what forty? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got to be. He's got to be at least twenty. Yeah, and he was sent away originally, and then he got, I guess he's slightly psychotic, has PTSD, let him out, and he likes to wear you know denim and wool, yeah, and hunt monsters. He likes to wear a Canadian tuxedo. <laughs> Is that what that's called? Yeah. Oh, I didn't denim know that. Denim on denim on denim. Oh, man. <laughs> Cowboy boots obviously yeah. have really good tread. Bullshit. <laughs> uh, I think was the kid who, the guy who played him in part five didn't come back because he was a he became a born-again Christian. Yeah, John Shepard. And who, didn't want to come back again. I thought he was great. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I love that. That's also my most rented. Yeah, Kung Fu because a lot of boobs in that one. It was written by a porn director too. <laughs> There's some good ones in there. It's Kung Fu Tommy. That motherfucker <laughs> yeah. is a badass in that movie. <laughs> I love that movie. Kung Fu Tommy. I wish he would have made an appearance in this because he doesn't know how to fight in this one. Really. Yeah. He's just like, come on, you pussy. But then we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to the end. Oh my God, where are we? No, you want to get back to the where they they he calls. By the okay, let's backtrack. No one calls the camp. That says there might be a there's an imposter Jason killing people. This is later. They find out like, okay, Jason's killing people. Yeah. But it's not Jason, we think it's Tommy, but he's loose in the area. Let's not take you know, let's no. not contact the place that he would go first. They don't care about them kids. Yeah. Fuck. Like they we don't. got all these kids that are here in fall break. <laughs> they can't even. It's there's a fall killer break. on the loose. <laughs> is, that, is that what we're going to call this now? It's fall break. They can't be fucking bothered. <laughs> They're having fun. They're learning about Native Americans and rocks. Steve. <laughs> Fuck you guys. I think it's really cool that he shows up at what's Karloff, uh, Karloff's uh, like general store, like bait, you know, named after Boris Karloff. That's pretty ass. Awesome. That's what I got. Bait <laughs> shop. In, Pam, in Pam's truck. <clears throat> um, from part five. Yeah, because uh, the 
calls the he calls Megan. He's like, "Hey, you want to help me?" And she's like, "Oh, I know exactly where you are." My dad's looking for you because you're supposed to be killing people. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing tonight? <laughs> we <Well>, yeah. <laughs> he goes to pick her up, and it, uh, I mean, I mean, her it, badass Camaro. Yeah, and her badass Camaro. Yeah. Um, but then we get to some more kills. We well, get a good crotch shot right in the Camaro. Too. I call it the coochie cam. Or she's, she's just got. She's like, put your head down here, and he's like, hello. They know that you're in my car, so hide your head by my cooch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm all about this, guys. It's like she turns into fucking Burt Reynolds all of a sudden. Oh, I know it's great, man. <laughs> it's, it's reverse it's, Burt Reynolds. It's full car chase. It's great. And there was a denim jacket in there, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> and that's another Alice Cooper song. It's uh, fucking was it rock and roll. Hard Rock Summer. There you go. Hard, Hard Rock, Rock Summer. Summer. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking yeah. of the lyrics. <laughs> but uh, we uh, we we have to talk about the kill of uh, Sissy, the girl with the um, the jersey. Yeah, I hate that... football, but man, she's the hottest chick in this whole movie to me. <laughs> that is. Yeah. So she's reading uh, Minute Work magazine. That's it. Yeah, I was gonna tell you about that. <laughs> I mean, because I, mean, I was like, please what the tell fuck me. The... I don't know. I didn't. I didn't Google search it. I didn't have enough fucking time. There's a lot to go Minute on in work. this movie, and like, is it about the, the Australian band Minute Work? I think it's about the Emilio <laughs> no. Estevez movie. <laughs> no, no, it's got to be porn. Come on, man. <laughs> Probably She's cool. Is. Probably is. So her roommate's asleep. She's just fucking listening to music on her Walkman with her furry slippers and looking at porn <laughs> <laughs> five feet away. You know, like you do when you're a teenager. Right. You know, there's kids in the room. You get out your porn mag and you're looking at yeah. it. Yeah. No, there were no kids in that room. Oh, that's right. This is the, yeah. this is the counselor. Yeah, the, the counselor. They thought they thought uh, they're like, oh, something's outside because again, they left their fucking window open and the fucking door is open. Well, you know. So it's like, a nice oh, it's just court. So she she pours a soda out of the window. Like, ha ha, it's gonna be a joke, and then nothing happens. Yeah, it's a great scene. Yeah, it is a great scene. Because she's like, oh my god, and she, she it's really tense because she backs up. She's like, I don't know what's going on. And she gets closer to it, and he literally pulls her out of her fucking slippers. I know, and those are the coolest little <laughs> See, slippers when I was a kid. You can't tell me this movie's not a comedy, people. <laughs> <laughs> and then he turns her head completely around and pulls it off. Yep. But since this was actually a pretty heavy, heavy edited movie during this time, you really don't see a lot of kills. Yeah, twisted I off, decapitated. Were, were they afraid contact. it was going to be a PG-13 movie at one time? That's why they added the kill with the extra kills in it? Yeah, oh, I didn't know that part. I just knew yeah. they had to add, like, three more kills. <laughs> yeah. Um, they weren't, the producers were like, we need to boof, beef this, boof this up. That's not in the butthole. Sorry about that. <laughs> we got uh, to we're gonna, boof this up a little bit. We're going to butt R-rated. chug up this oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> we got to Stevie Nicks this cocaine, baby. <laughs> 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 oh God! You're gonna have to take over here because this is one of my notes get a little weird. Oh, I can't wait! I don't know where we are in the movie. I don't care. <laughs> well, they're in the Camaro, yeah. and then like, the oh, we're dad... just jumping all around. All oh yeah. Well, they're yeah. driving the Camaro. Welcome to the Club Podcast. We don't give a <laughs> fuck. <laughs> the dad stops them as they're driving, and he just like pulls a gun on his daughter in the car and is like pointing it at her, like stop. Yeah, and, no. like yeah. well, of course. Fuck yeah. that bitch. Well, yeah, that, I mean, that's typical. That's in the standard police procedural. I there. told you he's a killer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Point a gun at your own daughter. See, I know, I know I'm skipping ahead, but my next note is uh, a kid with a machete. She stole his fucking machete. <laughs> I know, and it's like covered in like jello. It's, or, covered, like, it's, covered, it's covered in blood. A bit but, sword. Uh, it looks like it's made of like. like I've, got a, I've got a theory about this the whole machete. The thickest blood thing. you've ever seen. It is. It is very thick blood because yeah. he goes up to the, she goes to the counselor and she's like, oh, they're just playing a joke. It's like. Did you not look at the <laughs> fucking 80s are wild, man. Yeah. <laughs> and Jason's in the in the camp. I don't know why he hasn't killed the power yet. He, that's his normal MO. He does cut the phone line. He cuts the phone right? line. Yeah, but not the power and kill them. You know, fuck off, man. He, we gotta kill these kids. He wants everybody to see him. Oh, I forgot he doesn't yeah. kill children. He doesn't he does well, he he thinks about it. He was a child at one he, time. He was oh, a child. Weren't, do, weren't we I, how many so he doesn't killers? Want to kill okay. <laughs> this is bullshit. It's where his memories start. <laughs> yeah, the next one was windows open, doors unlocked everywhere. What the fuck is of wrong course. with these people? Oh, my one of my notes was <clears throat> Carrie Noon, who plays Paula, has more blood inside of her than a whale. Because when he <laughs> fucking killed her in that. That was an off screen. I thought that one was really cool, though. Yeah, yeah. he just spla- he, I guess he just splashes her open wound body somehow all over the fucking cabin. And it's like so much fucking blood. And, you know, uh, and then she slumped over the. She slumped over. That was, uh, that was probably my favorite kill, even though it's off screen. Because then she slumped over and he just reaches out and just pulls oh, yeah. her back in. It's great. And yeah. it's really cool. It's even better when you're watching at 1.5 speed, because I do that sometimes just to get through these movies when I'm making notes. <laughs> 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 oh boy but uh but uh yeah that was an off-screen murder and then you got your then, oh god do we really have to talk about the fucking jailbreak yeah i even made that note steve i'm not the clown with the red nose oh this is the scene yeah so the cop from his he's from shocker i always say that but his name is vincent gustaferio 
Uh, he's like, he's, he's, he's the fucking asshole red dog cop who, who's obviously taking too many passes at the fucking, yeah. his boss's daughter. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I didn't, you messed up your Chinese food at the beginning and now he's a fucking, he's just a raging asshole. Yeah. Been in a lot of cop shows too. Apparently. He is a cop in everything. He's actually a cop. There's a whole, uh, uh, series of movies called don't hike in the woods or something like or never hike in the woods. And they're all Friday the Thirteenth connected, and he and Tom Matthews are in those movies. Yeah, at least the first one I've ever seen. Well, there's the first one that I've seen, and uh, it's bizarre. There's four of them. Yeah, yeah, ne- yeah. Never hike alone, and it and Tommy plays. I mean, <laughs> Tom Matthews plays Tommy. Yeah. This guy plays the same character. Yeah, so that's my huh. I, that's what I remember about that character. I was like, oh, he's the guy from Shocker, and then I saw uh, Never Hike Alone, and there's like he said, four of them. So. Yeah. Bizarre. I'm gonna put that on the list. I haven't seen that. They're they're fan made films and they're fun. They're yeah. a lot of fun. They're not really bad. Nice. They're not like awful, awful. That's my cop. That's your cop no. story. <laughs> That's my cop news. So they break out. <laughs> it's a weird breakout plan too. So their whole plan is because the sheriff is gone. So it's just fucking Barney Fife over here. Yeah, just doing his paperwork and whatever. And she's killing cockroaches. <laughs> killing cockroaches. Yeah, it's, the scene starts off with him like squishing a cockroach with his finger. Yeah, which nobody would do that. Only a psychopath would do that. Yeah. <laughs> Only in shock. Only Nicholas Cage would do that. <laughs> Nicholas Cage. <laughs> Nicholas Cage. He'd take it one step further. Yeah. He'd probably eat it. Um, so her idea to break out is like, I'm going to throw you my notepad, and then you're going to take it, and then you're going to grab me, and you're going to kiss me. Yeah. And it works. This dumb motherfucker falls for it. <laughs> they're just making out, and it's it shows you that they have a connection. That scene, they're like, oh, yeah. well, they like each other. They really do like each yeah. other. It's not forced at I all. I think it's a magic kiss. It's a magic kiss, and uh, she steals his fucking gun. <laughs> puts it in his face. Not illegal. Not a problem. With, with this giant fucking red dot laser. I like the, I yeah. like to see the aftermath of this whole film as, like, the next day having to explain Everything you did, yeah. Where she goes to jail for stealing a cop's gun, right? And they leave his body in the in the in the you know in the bottom of the fucking lake. You know, he's, yeah. That's a whole other th- theory like, going on. He's like Officer Doofy from. <laughs> <laughs> he was the inspiration for fucking Officer scary. Doofy from <laughs> Scary Movie. They do sort of look like now that you say it. <laughs> yeah. So oh. they break out. They get everything going. They're gonna they head back to the camp. He's got to. He's got to finish what he started, Steve. I remember this one scene that always reminded me. And it made me laugh. Where Jason enters the cabin to get warm. I always like he's just gonna get warm. It's it's the one with all the kids, all the girls, yeah. and he just walks. He doesn't look at any of the children. He's just focused on the fire, and he's just like, oh, it's been a long twenty four hours see, since I've been back to life. No, see, because when he goes in the cabin with the kids, he stands over the one girl. And, but that doesn't and, happen until she goes, and, and but, then he's like, oh, but what's here's, up? Here's the thing. He's looking over the whole time. He's like. This is the bitch that stole my machete. Oh. And he's thinking about it. He's thinking about breaking his own rule. He's thinking about killing this little girl. He's like, you only got one rule, and you're going to have to break it tonight. It's Batman of the slasher genre. Is that where we're going with this? Fuck off. No. He was thinking about it, man. No, okay. He saw the look in his eye. He's just had a bad 24 hours. He's trying to warm up his toes. And then she gasped, and he's like, what the fuck? I'm all, I was having a private moment. And then what'd she do? She praised the evil away. Yeah, well, I guess it worked this time. It did because he nobody wants to hear that fucking Catholic shit. And this is where you can cue. Uh, <laughs> this is where you can cue some body count cop killer because that's what's happening. He's no. killing some fucking cops. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the the first one he kills, he it's gets like, he, with a throwing dart to the head. Again, proficient with throwing weapons, came counselor. Yeah. Second one, he crushed him, crushed his head. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I, I love that because that's the guy who was so worried about his hair. Yeah. And he's like, hey, let me fix it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, this is another thing that got me. So the sheriff gets there, right? And he checks on it. They know, they know people are dead. He just opens the door and be like, all right, all the kids are here. <laughs> just close it. And they like, all split up. And, and they like, know that this fucking serial killer is on the loose <laughs> and nobody wakes anybody up. Yeah. Don't wake up these kids. They'll just, call, they'll just cause panic, I guess. I don't know. But right. they just fucking leave. And then, uh, said, oh, yeah. He's... <laughs> <laughs> and then he eventually wakes him up after they find after he finds a couple bodies, right? Oh yeah. I mean, and and uh, it's funny he just gives him this like this pep talk like, "Hey, you might die, I guess." <laughs> you know? And there's this weird like montage of children hiding. <laughs> Oh, I love it when they're diving they're into the bed. Diving yeah. under the beds, just like <laughs> grabbing Raggedy Ann, pulling her under the bed. That's so good. <laughs> Don't tell me this movie's not a comedy. <laughs> it is, but I love it. it. Is. I love it. It's one of my favorites <sighs> of the whole of the whole franchise. It's one of my favorites. And then, uh, yeah, that's when you get round one of the sheriff versus uh, Jason Voorhees. Yeah. It was a pretty cool fight. 
because you you're like, oh shit, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna get it. Oh yeah, he just he unloads on him with yeah, shotguns and shoots him. guns, and this is like Jason's like. What are you doing, dude? I I I go here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a counselor because it, maybe in Jason's mind he's still twin. Maybe I'll, he's ten years old. I'll pass. I don't know. <laughs> when you get re, when you get struck by lightning and brought back to life, don't you just they start over and it's like, yeah, yeah, back at camp. Yeah, <laughs> he just wants to get back to his bunk. He's, and, just, trying, <laughs> he's just trying to go back to sleep. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole movie is really just about him going back to his bed. Yeah, you fuckers, and you're messing it up one after another after another. I'm sorry, I have to kill you. Mm. Well, Poppy like pimples. This is where the, those two kids, the two kids, were like, "Oh, this is this sucks." They, yeah. have, they have a cool line. It's like, "What did well, you want?" Well, yeah, he's like, he, he, "He's pep talked kids," and the kids were like, "I think we're dead meat." So, what did you want to be when you grew up? Yeah, that's so <laughs> funny, man. Oh, those kids. That kid's fucked up. Like, if I was in that situation, I would not want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So Tommy and Megan show up to show up to the camp, and there he's got a plan. He's not going to tell her, by the way. I got a plan. Don't worry about it. I'm going to get this boat. You go find everybody. You go to the cabin. Take off. He jumps in there, gets everything ready, gets the gasoline, gets this huge freaking monster boulder from space, I guess, and then this amazing huge chain that we see on all the movies since, you know, from this yeah. film, except for part eight, I guess. Yeah. And and then it's like it's on. And here's the problem with this scene. <laughs> he's all laughing. as a kid. He's like, go to the cabin. And then when the kids start screaming, and he's like, wait a second. <laughs> Don't go to the cabin. <laughs> he goes, Megan, no. <laughs> he's very confused about what he wants at this point. Yeah. He doesn't know. It's been a long day. Oh, God. I doubt he slept. <laughs> Nobody slept. Nobody slept. He's Nobody slept since Jason woke up. He's been up from like 36 hours straight, man. Jason's be a not, little... He's not letting anybody waste no. his sleep. No, and uh, a couple more notes. Uh, Sheriff fight round two. Jason wins fatality. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Folded in half like a fucking Mortal Kombat character. Well, because he, yeah. he, Megan is screaming out for her dad. Like, that's what I would do. Dad, fuck, this is crazy. And then he's like, you know, he's hiding behind a branch. Yeah. <laughs> Jason walks by, doesn't see him. And he's like, no. <laughs> Pulls a fucking Darth Vader before Darth Vader. And then, then yeah, there you go, Dave. He just, it's time to just beat the crap out of him with my bare hands. Shotgun didn't work. Yeah. The pistol didn't work. It, so your hands are going to work. Yeah, your hands are going to work, and it's big fucking rock. Absolutely. It's a really good death, actually. You should ask that little girl where the machete was. <laughs> <laughs> this was a little bit before Jason was able to just punch your head completely off your body like he did in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, that was a couple of years later. Yeah, but he, he was, didn't develop he, that superhuman He was probably yet. on meth. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> the oh. sheriff jumps on his back, and he falls down, and I'm like, that's not Jason. <laughs> oh, he's, oh. He's, he's got he's stiff bones, man. He's been yeah. he's been asleep for a while. We, we've he's already established. He's a little established. soggy right now. <laughs> he's a little yeah, soggy. He's, he's brand new, and then you know, it, it, in part seven, he has an entire like cabin <coughs> fall on him. Yeah, Ken Hodder's like, no, not me, buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> CJ it's, Graham's a little soft. Sorry, this is where we get to the showdown. Yeah, the showdown, and it's actually really cool. I like how Jason fucking just jukes him. He's like, "Come get me." And he's like, "Okay." And bloop, bloop, bloop. He's underwater. <laughs> where is he now? <laughs> Oh, he's under the I know, man. And so we, he put, he puts the gas all over the all over the lake, and then of course he's got the fantastic yeah. aim with the uh, with the the match with the match. Still didn't have that looks really up. good too. Him in the boat with the flames around the boat and everything. Like, it's amazing. It's That's right really on the back scene. of the tape too, which kind of sold it for you when you're looking at the movie. You're like, oh shit! I don't then know. He jumps out of the water like that whole part is. Great. Yeah, actually, I've got the the VHS right, right, right here. That's it, <laughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> it is a cool scene. Spoiler. It's an amazing scene. And it, I don't know the, the real, the, as we're talking about realism in this film, it's like, I don't know if that's how that works. I know oil works. I don't know if gasoline works. Fuck it. Let's light this fucking water on fire. Yeah. With, yes. half, with a half tank of gasoline. <laughs> with a half, half a can. Half a can. Half a can. Whole fucking lake. Um, yeah. Steve, do you want to explain this last scene? <sighs> I'll do it. Fuck it. Okay, I was All gonna right. say it's a lot of fun. <clears throat> yeah, I mean it. It is fun. Are you gonna get realistic with it and tear it apart? Because I might have to cry. No, I'm not okay. Gonna it's tear one of my favorite it's a, well, it's, of these. It's of this really franchise. cool because there's like the jump scare. It's like reminiscent of the end of the of of, of part one, where right. Jason, you know, he's under the water. The fake Jason jumps out in the end of part one. The one that's not really Jason. Exactly, Lil Ari. Um, yeah. Mm. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, Dick, Dick Pick Arley. Dick Arley. <laughs> Anyway, so he jumps out and they have a they have a tussle. And they're wrestling. <laughs> they have a, tussle. No, they have a little tussle. My favorite part is like Jason's got gas or something. It's just bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. But he comes out the other side. He's like, sorry. <laughs> I stopped at Karloff's and got some wings. And now I can blah, 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 blah. He had like 40 bucks in an American Express. He got, oh, that's right. He probably got it delivered. <laughs> I 
Crystal Lake wings got him fucked in. Stopped off at the Roy Rogers up there in New Jersey and got him uh. some food. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he fakes him out and then he jumps out of the water like you're talking about. Ace. Yeah, they, it's a beautiful scene. It is. They have they have this little wrestling match. Which yeah. Kane Hodder, Jason would have just broke him in half, I guess. But oh yeah, CJ Graham, he's like, I give you a chance. I give you. Oh, <laughs> CJ's nice. He's, he's a scrapper. <laughs> even, even his Jason for he's is nice. And uh, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy ends up doing it. He well, he, well no, no, he, Tommy gets fucking <clears throat> uh, well, no, no, almost drowned. But Tommy gets the chain around his neck because yeah. well, Megan talk, comes. Well, he she does eventually. Oh, that's right. Thank you. For You're not remembering this right. Steve. I never remember anything. So, anyways, I could tell you who lit this movie. <laughs> so, so, so I'm they, that nerd. They they have their fight, <laughs> and he goes away, and then he comes back up, and he puts the chain around his neck, and he's like, "Ha, I got you, bitch!" And he, pulls, <laughs> and he push, right. pushes the boulder in. And he's like, "Ah, I am victorious!" But what he doesn't realize is Jason's got a fucking death grip. Yeah, and he's going to pull him with him. Well, I mean, I mean, Cram Crystal Lake is only like ten feet deep. Yeah, so he's got room. He's yeah. just reach he's up and just grab it. Standing on the bottom of the lake, <laughs> <laughs> and you can see him. I know, I know. It's like it's got to be just full of algae because it looks. It's like ten feet deep. Come on now. Yeah, so um, he pulls him down. He's, Jason starts strangling him. This is why we say that C.J. Graham is uh, the softer Jason. I think so too, because it looks like he's dancing with him. Yeah, <laughs> he's just giving the jiggle. Well, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't Jason strangle jiggle. him to, comp- to completion. He That's just, what I'm saying. Like the he, Jason jiggle, man. He's just like, <laughs> he, oh, he, 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 he lets go, and he just sort of floating away. It's like, it's like, why didn't you just snap him in half like you did to the fucking cop? It's majestic. He looks beautiful. It's like the lights coming through, the bubbles that I just farted. All, you know, and it's the a, wings. And it's a really cool scene too. Like it's shot underwater. It's yeah, it's gorgeous. You know, it's it, it's you, you watch it and it's it's like I said again, well lit. So congratulations to whoever that was, Steve. Who was that? I can't remember right now. I was joking, <laughs> but I'm the use. I usually know that kind of crap. Uh, this was I know this was actually partially filmed in Tom McLaughlin's I think parents' uh, swimming pool and they fucked it all up. <laughs> because when Megan comes out there to help him, because she's a badass wearing her yeah. James Dean jacket, she's got to jump in there and save his ass, okay? So we forget. Obviously, Jason, you know, she forgets Jason's right next to him. And she's the final girl. Whatever. She is. It's a, it's oh, a, yeah, it's she a, is. It's a fake out because she's actually the final girl, yeah. which is weird. It's just weird for, like, horror films because usually the the bad girl, you know, the one that doesn't listen to authority, oh, they're dying. It's always the good girl that's the final girl. So yeah. this is the first one that sort of sets up that... You know, breaks that mold as far as as far as I know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm fucking wrong. No, she's the James Dean of this movie, man. <clears throat> she's cool. She's badass. She doesn't give a fuck about authority. She forgot that she the lake's bad. only ten feet deep, and Jason fucking grabs her. He's like, yeah. "Ha, I got you, bitch." <laughs> yeah, as you would say. She turns on the fucking. She turns on the 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 motor on yeah. the boat. The outboard, baby. We gotta yeah. get this thing now. I don't know if anybody's ever been in a boat and tried to get on on top of a boat, let alone start it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the, the the logistics of that are insane. Yeah. So there's no fucking way. But I love this scene. Even as a kid, I was like, I was just I've been on a lake. That's not how you can't. You'd be that. surprised what you can do when somebody's trying to kill you. Steve. Okay, fine. You're panicking, trying to start a boat. Like, oh my god! <laughs> you look like you're jerking <laughs> yeah. off over there, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah, a, she 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 starts the outboard, gets it going, and then puts we, it right into his fucking neck. And the most important thing, we get this amazing iconic mask in the next film because of this scene. Yes. Yeah. Good job, John Carr Beekler. Yeah. Rest in peace. You know, you know what? If he would have just like leaned up a little bit, could have cut his head clean off, and then he could have come up. Whoa! And he could, and then he could have come up and like healed in a day or so. Whoa, franchise buddy, we yeah. got it. No, yeah, we got it. We got you know. But yeah. that is really cool. Like the Jason being chained at the bottom of the lake. I, I really, I really do enjoy that that shot of him just floating there. Yeah, yeah. that's great. And she she swims him to safety, Tommy. Mm-hmm. It's great. All the flames are obviously Dow style. You know, they're going away. She pulls him up on the on the under the under the bank and gives him CPR. And all yeah. the kids are hanging out. And <laughs> it's like, hey kids, you want to see a dead body? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, teaching a very good uh, camp thing, which would be learning CPR at camp, right? Hey, on a real live body. She's the best counselor in the whole movie. <laughs> Jason is. So she brings it back to life. Goddamn it! We have, we got to finish this up. Tommy comes back, and everyone's, oh, thank the Lord, because, you know, everyone's praying. Yeah. They actually uh, cut another scene of the same girl <laughs> praying, praying over Tommy's body. I guess they just didn't want that, that kind of slant to the film, but that was actually filmed, apparently. So wait, you said Martin came back. There was something. Some oh, yeah, were... we'll get there. So everything's oh, happy. Right everything's there. great. Original ending. And then, you know, Jason, you know, we're, it, it's like kind of like the ending. Like, we're done. It's over. 
Jason opens one of his eye because apparently he's only got one because Corey Feldman fucked the other. <laughs> <laughs> he fucked it with the machete. And then, apparently, in the script phase, Martin has been paid off by Jason's shitty bastard dad. Yeah. Elias. Right. So you know. Hit me. A lot well, Elias Elias Voorhees, That's who's right. actually played by by CJ Graham in, in uh short films. A couple short films that uh one came out hold on. Hold on. I gotta find this again. Shit. One came out this uh within the last year and then there was another one that's coming out this year. They're short films. God damn it. Talk Steve. It's so there it is. Well, there it is right there. Yeah, talk Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put it up on me, baby. Yeah, it's called uh it's it's called uh Friday the thirteenth Vengeance. Oh, okay. So it's hmm. a fan main film? Yeah. I love those, man. So and there's the first one is Vengeance, but uh he plays Elias War, he's his father. So I I don't know about the scene, so So the scene is supposed to kind of uh wrap up the whole idea of why I was joking about why Jason is buried in the cemetery. He's been paying Martin, the caretaker, to take care of his boy. So, because yeah. you're like, you know, I'm, I'm making a joke at the beginning. Like, why the fuck did they put him in there? Because they, the, the caretaker, I don't know. I thought you would think he'd be like more covert or secret, but it's like Jason Voorhees' his name on the yeah. fucking There's a tombstone. storyboard of it on the DVD. That's right. The, there is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They have storyboards of it with, uh, I think they actually get the actual caretaker guy. They came back and recorded the voiceover for it. But it's him. He's walking in there and like Jason's dad walks up and like hands him like a hundred dollar bill or something. And he's like, He's like, where's my boy? And he's like, pans over, and there's like Jason's grave, and there's his mom's grave. See, I don't remember the mom's grave I part. Think, yeah, the mom's grave is next to it, and uh, I it just kind of like fades out from. I don't. It doesn't. I think that's supposed to be the ending. It's yeah, like, that's dun, like the dun, ending dun, of it. Dun. Which so if Jeffrey Dahmer's mom like was it. like, hey, I want him, I want a grave. <laughs> I want you to bury my boy over here. I'm sure everybody, nobody'd be fine with that. First off, why would his dad, who <clears throat> never had gay uh, anything shit about his s- short hydrocephalic son yeah now he cares about him because you know infamy i don't know (laughs) know. he saw his name in the newspaper and he was like ding 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 oh yeah yeah yeah. get some money off this the news clippings (laughs) that they're in part four it's like come meet jason's dad he'll be at the next horror hound (laughs) oh yeah oh my god we gotta that's the end of jason Lives. lives. Jason lives. <laughs> and they're like, boy, I hope somebody with psychic powers doesn't come down to this lake next summer. <laughs> and that would really suck. <laughs> that, would re- that would really ruin everything for us. Yeah. That would undo everything we just did. That's a lot of work and said, nah, nah, we're going to bring Carrie to town because that was supposed to be Carrie. Yeah. They were trying to make it Carrie versus Jason and they couldn't afford it. But that's a whole nother story. That's a whole other story. story. We're gonna, As they say in Conan. We're going to do a whole Friday the 13th episode of all the all the films eventually, at, yeah. one, at one point sometime eventually yeah but we just wanted to talk about this one because it's the i like how your voice is getting serious is it is, is it the 30th anniversary jesus don't put me on the spot right now no, i can't remember uh this week uh, for part six yeah i believe yes. it is either that or the uh it's the 30th yes because i'm 46 yeah um but yeah that's what everyone's been talking about this film and I, I was trying to get this episode out earlier before we um before we recorded it now, but we just brought Lene quickly to town, and I have been wiped the fuck out for the last two weeks, and we'll, um, we'll de- we're definitely going to try to, to get her back on the show. If you are following us on Facebook or Instagram or anything, like that, you know that we did a live podcast last week with Lene Quigley, uh, and that was awesome. That's why we been kind of the episodes have been kind of skipping around a little bit. But we're back on schedule now. We're back on schedule. And we're ruining fucking movies for you like Jason Lives, which is a lie because he didn't live. Well, I guess he did. Yeah, he did. He came back. We're back. Because he's back. the men behind the mask. The man behind (laughs) the mask. (laughs) Soundtrack's actually That's awesome. Hey, guys, we're going to get out of here. Thank you so much for tuning in and trying to get around us and listen to our rants about these movies that we love we fuck them up all the time because you know we're on a budget god damn it <laughs> so <laughs> dave get us out of here yes you can find us on anchor fm breaker google podcast overcast pocket cast radio public spotify apple podcast cast box youtube facebook like share subscribe tell us we suck whatever do what you want oh yeah i love those all right bye we're out of here later dig it dig it dig it dig it <laughs> <laughs>